What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Road Reflections. I'm your host, Chris Mohan. If you're new to this series, uh, this is uh, uh, if you're if you're new to the channel, if you're discovering me for the first time, and this is the first video you're watching. Um, this is a, this is a more loose ranty series. I have uh, I have my couple of little notes that I look look to and uh, talk about some stories uh, that uh, I think are important that I don't get the chance to cover on my other two shows that I do on this channel, which is Forkful of Noodles, which is uh, now it's the it's it's the um, they're kind of live virtual shows that I do. Uh, every Friday at 9 p.m. that you can get tickets for if you want to be in the audience for that. And um, usually cover like bigger topics, bigger ideas, that sort of stuff on that show. And on this one, I talk, uh, I, this is more ranty, and then I have the uh, Taboo Table Talk, which is my interview series, and then I do the Dispatch on that, which is more, uh, some sometimes idea-based stuff, but uh, more more like current events stuff. So... Sometimes I don't get to talk about all the stories that I want to talk about, so uh, I do these, and I usually do them in my car. Uh, sometimes I'll do them in a studio if I have uh, extra time in a week or something like that uh, to get into a studio and, and do them. So that's that's what these are, uh, and as as usual, we'll do we'll start with a little bit of uh, checking of what's going on. Uh, you, you might be able to tell a little bit from my voice that I am slightly still congested from. Uh, the weather changes and my allergies, so uh, that's that's been going on. The the weather's been up and down here. It's it's been warm. It's been cold. It's been you know rainy and windy. Uh, so my allergies are, are flaring up. My sinuses are, are kind of going off. Uh, it's been a little bit of a challenge, uh, but you know I'm, I'm I'm getting I'm getting better, and I think I think like my body is getting accustomed to it. So. Yeah, well, yeah, other than that, there's there's really not much else to say. Uh, again, at the top, I want to remind everybody that if you want to catch past episodes of my stuff, obviously you can subscribe to, to my channels on uh, YouTube, Facebook, or rockfin.com. You can go to rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha. That is an ad-free crypto blockchain site uh, where you get a, a lot of content on the freemium model. And if you subscribe for 10 bucks a month, you get all of the premium content for uh, for uh, for every single creator on Rockfin uh, for you know for the for the ten dollars a month. So it becomes like the Netflix for like content creators and stuff. So highly recommend doing that. Or you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, check out uh, check out all the stuff that I do on there. That that's sort of the one stop shop. Uh, you can check out my albums. You can. Um, become a sustaining member if you have the ability to become a sustaining member uh, you get a lot of perks by becoming a sustaining member like free tickets bonus videos um, early access to longer full videos uh, that sort of stuff so I hope that I hope that you do I hope that, that some of you have if that have the ability to become sustaining members do become uh, sustaining members uh, but uh, you, you by no means have to. Um, you know, if you don't want to go through the Rockfin, the stuff is available on other platforms as well, uh, including an audio platform. Um, that, is, that is another thing that it's available on. Uh, so uh, I know usually that, that at the top of the show I tend to, to ramble for a few minutes, but uh, I want to get into these stories. I have three different stories to talk to you guys about. The first one is sort of a follow-up to uh, a topic I addressed last week, which is qualified immunity for cops. This basically means that they can't... Qualified immunity like prevents people from suing police departments and law enforcement uh, over civil suits. Uh, so like, one of the examples that the articles like to use is like if there's a high-speed chase and a cop comes through and you know, hits your car or something, or knocks your side view mirror or something like that, you can't sue the cop for damages. Um, and really what they use this for is, is police brutality. That's where a lot of the cases are. Uh, they're, they're in the overuse of force within law enforcement, and we've seen a ton of that throughout the country, and qualified immunity has become a major topic of conversation because of uh, all the protests and the demonstrations that we've seen all across the country in regards specifically to police brutality that uh, this summer was uh, ramped up by 
uh, the shooting of George, or I'm sorry, not the shooting, the the uh, murder of George Floyd when Derek Chauvin was on his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. Not only that, but you also had the shooting of Breonna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, Ahmaud Arbery uh, was, was not shot by cops, but he was shot by uh, two racists. Uh, and, uh, and then recently we saw Jacob Blake get shot in the back seven times and now is paralyzed and is in pain constantly. So, uh, you know, qualified immunity protects the police officers who did that sort of stuff, who used this excessive force. And last week we talked about how Virginia had uh, put out a bill to re- uh, get rid of qualified immunity for police officers so that they can be prosecuted for this sort of stuff. And uh, unfortunately, now the bill is dead. As of now, the bill is dead in Virginia. So last week, it looked like it was going to go through. It looked like it was going to pass the House. Um, And it didn't pass the House at first. At first, it lost by like a thin margin. Um, And there were two Democrats. One abstained from voting. And uh, so, so, you know, the the person that wrote the legislation had to talk to them and and they were going to try to reconsider because it was back up on the House um, on Tuesday last week, I believe. And uh, that's that's kind of where I picked up the story. So it really seemed like it was going to go through and everything was going to we were going to it was going to get pushed into the Senate uh, and and face its challenges there. But uh, one of the one of the Democrats that voted against this bill in Virginia, basically said, well, um, you know, uh, we really have to think about this. We don't want people suing cops over frivolous lawsuits. And I feel like that is a very out of touch statement to make, (laughs) right? Like, because, because they're not suing people over frivolous lawsuits. This is, this is specifically for excessive force that cops use. So it's important to have this It's important to revoke qualified immunity so that cops can be prosecuted under the law that they're supposed to represent. They're not supposed to be above the law. They're supposed to uh, be a part of it. And uh, this person was saying that, oh, it opens the doors and it makes things more difficult on the local level because now local cops might be sued for frivolous things. And really, like, again, it's kind of a tone-deaf statement because... Where do you think some a lot of these shootings are happening? A lot of these problems are coming from the local level, right? In Minneapolis, and Louisville, and Wisconsin, those were those were those were local cops that were doing this. Minneapolis city cops, the Louisville Police Department, Con- in, uh, the Kenosha Police Department. Even here in Pittsburgh, uh, the the shooting of Antoine Rose was Pittsburgh cops. They were city cops. You know, it, it, this isn't qualified, like. Right now, we're not talking about federal level police at the moment. Uh, we're talking about local law enforcement. And with something like qualified immunity, and, there, and there's a bunch of different stuff, right? Like there, there was a Virginia, I think, I believe the mayor of Virginia Beach was, and the sheriff of, in Virginia Beach was basically like, oh, you know, my police officers don't even know about qualified immunity until, you know, they, they, they have to use it. Which is awful because it, it, that, that just means that cops have a, a, this sense of superiority without, qualified, without the knowledge of qualified immunity even. So they're just, they're just misusing their power just because and now you add qualified immunity on top of it and they learn about it and they go, oh shit, I'm going to be protected not just by an overpowered police union but also, also by the the legislative branch oh this is great so you know it it, it lets them use the kind of force that they want to it lets them do whatever they feel like they need to do um, in order to get away with using excessive force and things of that sort so it so it's a tone deaf statement but but then she came back and you know voted uh to revoke it she came back and she changed her mind. And then the person that abstained changed their mind. So it got through on the house. It made it through on the house. B- barely, but it made, made it through on the house. And, um, and then it went into the Virginia Senate. Went into the Virginia Senate. 
And once it got to the Virginia Senate, there was a Senate Judiciary Committee, uh, and they they revoked it. They they killed the bill, twelve to three. So it didn't even go into the Senate to 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 be voted on. And again, you know, the the sheriff's department and stuff were like, oh, this this is great because now local law enforcement doesn't have to face frivolous lawsuits. Which it like. When has that ever fucking been a thing? When have we seen these frivolous lawsuits against law enforcement that has made this big news? Like, it never has. If, you know, it's like we, we take the minority of the events and, and, and then we make the... Like, they use that argument for, for killer cops. And they're like, oh, this is just a, a one rotten apple, right? Which they miss quote that because one rotten apple ruins the whole bunch like oh but it's just you, we can't judge the entire force by by these by this one rotten apple but here we are making a judgment that if there is a small small percentage of lawsuits against police officers that are frivolous lawsuits you're making a judgment call about that and 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 now you're legislating on behalf of that too Kind of a bullshit claim. Like, it, it's a, this is not like suing McDonald's for a hot cup of coffee. Oh, the co- they were just too hot, these cops. Ugh. Only if these cops were less hot, things would have been different. And, uh, you know, and then they're c- coming out and saying, oh, you know, the, the bill's not, o- we, the fight still goes on, like, you have to support your law enforcement because um, th- this is not the last time we'll, we'll, see, we'll see this bill. And uh, I, hope, I hope not either. I hope that, you know, some of these fucking Democrats in Virginia grow a spine and push back against the Senate Judiciary Committee in in Virginia. And I hope that Democratic voters in Virginia will also grow a backbone and push back against their representatives and their senators to say that this is something that needs to be uh, put into legislation. We need to get rid of qualified immunity for police officers. I, I would I would wager to bet. If I was a betting man, I would bet uh, that if you asked most of the people in Virginia whether or not qualified immunity should be revoked for police officers, you gave them all of the information, the unbiased information, give them the percentage of quote-unquote frivolous lawsuits, Versus the percentage of cases that have gone all the way up to the Supreme Court dealing with police brutality. And uh, inhumane actions by the police. I would wager to bet that most most average American citizens would uh, vote to, to, to ban qualified immunity. I, w- I, I really would. And then the legislators would make a law and clearly state none of that legal horse shit, none of that legal mumbo jumbo horse shit that we are revoking qualified immunity. So if you kill an unarmed civilian, if you kill somebody uh, by by the use of excessive force or or by shooting them, then you are going to be prosecuted by the full extent of the law. If you uh, if you are reckless and you do put people in danger, you do cause them property damage that you can't get away with that. That is collateral. That, that you know, it's, it's the same rhetoric that they use in terms of war. It's collateral damage. It's what they say in war, right? It's, all, it's collateral damage. This is war. It's collateral damage. Well, these are civilians. We're not in a war. But the cops are trained to think that we are talked about that several times before and I have outlined a couple different um, I did a dispatch uh, maybe in in July June or July can't remember exactly when I did it talking about qualified immunity because the Supreme Court said they're not going to they're not going to overturn it 
that liberal Supreme Court that everybody wants to say, oh, we got to vote, we got to vote Joe Biden so that he puts a, a liberal in the courts and they'll, they'll put all these progressive ideas in place, which, which they won't. You know, and this happened just when at the same time where they said, oh, you can't be fired from a job if you're uh, a member of the LGBTQ community, which, yeah, you shouldn't be fired for your lifestyle choice. That that lifestyle choice does not affect your job. It should be based on the quality of your work. So you can't be discriminated against, which is great. That's awesome. But it was overshadowed. Uh, That that overshadowed the, the fact that they banned qualified immunity. And I, I talked about that in a dispatch, and I kind of outlined that. So that so that video is available on uh, on the channel. But you know that that's the sort of stuff that happens. There was nothing distracting um, away from this. This is just straight up the Virginia Senate saying, "No, nah, we're going to keep it in place. We're we're going to let these cops do what they want." Gets in the way of gets in the way of policing. Well, then maybe we should redefine what policing is. The next story uh, that I want to talk about is uh, ranked choice voting in Massachusetts. There, there was a, a, a citizen initiative to uh, have ranked choice voting in Massachusetts. Um, and I believe it's not going to be a ballot initiative in Massachusetts uh, in November, which is good should be a ballot initiative. We, we need more ranked choice voting. Um, I think that is a much better way of running a system. It's more accurate. There's less voter disenfranchisement. Um, and I've, I've talked at length about ranked choice voting uh, several different times, including I did a, a road reflection series back in March, about uh, March or April, about that. Um, and... If you're unfamiliar with what it is, if you don't want to dig through my older videos to try to find uh, the hour and a half that I spent talking about ranked choice voting and uh, where it comes from and how it works and all that kind of stuff, or or if you don't want to go to the one I did a couple months ago uh, about it, um, ranked choice voting is basically you get to exactly what it sounds like you get to rank the candidates, uh, you know, based on your preference, one, two, three, four, whatever how many other candidates there are. And, you know, they do a round of counts, and the last per, la, the, the candidate with the least amount of votes will get knocked off, and it goes to your second vote, and then the votes get redistributed based on your second vote. Um, so it's not as hard as people think it is. Probably a little bit longer of a process, which is fine because this is voting, So, you know, if, if it takes a little bit longer to get an accurate count, then yes, good. Let's be accurate about it. Let's do the job properly. Now, all this, all this is sparked by uh the the victory uh in Massachusetts of the centrist democrat the former republican which like most fucking centrist democrats were republicans you know like elizabeth warren is is kind of a centrist democrat and she was a republican like i feel like centrist democrats are just like republicans that like gay people you know they're just like yeah the gays are fine but i think healthcare isn't a right I don't think Medicare for all is really going to work. But gay people are cool. You guys, right? Gay, we're good? I got a rainbow pin. I, I'll even put a Black Lives Matter pin on. But, what, but I mean, if you need to go to the hospital and you can't get access to health care, then, you know, Black Lives Matter when you can pay for it. You have the access to pay for it. That's, that's, that's centrist Democrats. These former Republicans to centrist Democrats. But this uh, centrist Democrat, former Republican, Jake... i got to read my handwriting here. can't remember his name exactly. Uh, Auchinloss, I believe. Auch- if I'm mispronouncing that, I'm, I am sorry. 
Uh, but he he won the con- fourth congressional district in in Massachusetts, and he was up against Joe Kennedy, and uh, and there was a progressive uh, uh, as well on the ballot, and Auchen Auchen Kloss won. Uh, again, this guy is like he doesn't really stand for what the people stand for, and he and he won at twenty three percent. Uh, he that that's what he got. He got twenty three percent of the votes, and uh, and he won. Uh, meanwhile, the progressive on the on the ballot uh, won. Jess Mermo uh, got twenty one percent of the votes. Twenty one point one percent of the votes. Uh, you know, and she she stepped down. She was like, I think I'm going to end the race, but she was like, I have concerns about the votes. I I have concerns about the way the votes were counted, the election system, which, you know, yeah, when you're going up against anyone that is, that's anything re- related to the Democrats and the DNC, you, yeah, you should be. I mean, you should be concerned if the Republicans are doing it too, because the Republicans fuck with that sort of shit as well. And, you know, she, she, she stepped down and there's this interest in place. And of course, uh, all the all the staunch Democrats were like, oh, well, you know, we could have had someone a little bit more to the left had she not run. Had she not run, maybe the, the slightly left candidate would have won, despite the fact that she got second place. She got 21% of the votes to, to 23 to the person that won. Uh, so they call her the spoiler. That's uh, that's where the shit's going. Like we we call third, but you know the society calls third parties a spoiler, which is not an ideology I really uh, believe in. I, I I think that's wrong. I don't think third parties are spoilers. I think third parties are necessary. Uh, and uh, and I think the larger point of it that that people miss is the amount of people that voted for a third party. The amount of people that voted for a progressive really speaks to speaks volumes to the fact that. Um, you know, you, you, you have a, a, a bunch of people that said, uh, hey, we don't want these two candidates. We don't want the centrist and we don't want slightly left. We don't want the slightly left neoliberal. What we want is a fucking progressive. What we want is the Green Party. What we want is the libertarians. If you get ranked choice voting... You get rid of that argument. You get rid of the spoiler because a ranked choice vote would would get you a true majority, uh, in in a true democracy too. Uh, by 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 which I mean you have, you you don't lock people into one thing or the other. If you're not a Democrat, you must be a Republican. If you're not a Republican, you must be. no. I don't bind either of those parties, and there's a lot of people that don't. Most of the country is independent. That's how they see themselves. So to say that you have to be locked into one or the other is just ludicrous. It doesn't make any fucking sense. All that all that should tell people is, uh, hey, we didn't want these corporate candidates. We wanted somebody that believes in things that we believe in. We would like to vote with our belief system, so we're going to vote for the candidate that lines up with that. That has earned our votes. Ranked choice voting would eliminate that spoiler argument. It would give you the option of saying, this person lines up with my vote 100%. This person lines up with my vote about 80%. This one about 50%. And then these bottom two, you know, I'm at, I'm at under 20% in agreement with them. It's also an accurate pulse of the country, too, with ranked choice voting. And it gets you to a true majority. It also gets rid of uh, the, the, the ugly competition of politics, right? Uh, the, the negative ad campaigns. Look at the shit that we're seeing on Twitter with, with Biden and Trump. It's like two fucking octanagerians having a playground fight on Twitter. All they do is shit on each other. All they do is shit on each other. 
we talk about Trump inciting violence, and he does, and he has, but so is Joe Biden. Like, there's clips of Joe Biden saying that he wants to punch Trump in the face. How is that not inciting violence? How is, not, how is that not encouraging your, your voter base to get violent against somebody that voted for Trump? And there are all these ads, these fucking political ads, right? I, I, I have a little bit of a side job now and take care of this uh, elderly lady and stuff. And, you know, I, I watch the, the evening news. I, I, I don't watch the evening news unless I'm there, right? That's what she likes to watch. That's what we watch. And, I mean, it's like every fucking commercial break, there is a political com- a, a campaign ad. And they're all attack ads, you know, and, and they're all lies, they're all lies. Like the Trump ones are like, Joe Biden wants to get rid of the police. He wants to defund the police. And he's cool with you getting killed in a parking lot. And leaving your children orphaned. And then setting fire to those orphanages because fuck orphans and fuck the police. And it's like, no, Joe Biden wants to give more money to the police. He's come out and said that. He's like, I don't want to defund the police. I want to give them more money so that they can get help doing what they need to do, which is like, yeah, so you want to help them kill more minorities? You, you want to help them get away with murder? Why do you need a tank in Dothan, Alabama? You don't. Give the tanks to the schools. <laughs> kidding. Schools don't need tanks either. Fund the police just means let's let's get our let, let, let's put our money into our communities in places that we need it. So if your if your school is not doing too well, then let's pump up the education system. Let's you know let's put money into a community garden where people can grow vegetables and share that with their community. Let's let's uh, let's pump it into the agricultural district so that you know instead of uh, wasting food, we can give it to people that need it. Let's take care of each other. Rank choice voting would decrease that sort of ugliness, these sort of lies that happen. The uh, In Maine, they have it, and the two progressive candidates in Maine uh, got together and did a campaign commercial together where they're basically like, yeah, you know, progressivism is on the ballot twice. Um, and whoever gets in will will support the the winner. So you can choose, you know, vote one for me and two for him, or two for him and one for me, or, or one for him and two for me. Or, and and you know, like you'll you'll be assured that you have a progressive uh, that that becomes a mayor or governor. Governor, I believe it was the governor. And ranked choice voting would would make these candidates talk outside their fucking voter base. Holy shit, could you imagine? And that's scary because what you'll end up finding out is that conservatives, liberals, progressives, all these people, their big concern is probably, probably comes down to class warfare, right? Like they are part of the working class and they feel like the working class is not being treated well. That the upper 1% is getting... uh, a lot more breaks than the working class is. So, if they find that out and the Democrats are like, eh, we don't really want to go for like a better minimum wage or we don't really want to go for a universal health care, that means that they're probably going to move down the list to like three or four. So the states that have this ballot initiative coming up for ranked choice voting, we got Massachusetts, Alaska, California, Colorado, and Minnesota. These are all going to have uh, ranked choice voting ballot initiatives. So if ranked choice voting is something that is important to you, keep an eye out on that ballot initiative uh, and vote for it. Vote for ranked choice voting. Tell these people that that's what you want, that this, this duopoly, this broken election system isn't going to be something that we stand for, isn't going to be something that we're going to just take lying down. 
uh, and we're not going to, we're not going to fucking deal with your bullshit anymore. I, I wish Pennsylvania would do it too. I really do. But Pennsylvania is a pretty, uh, neoliberal state and a, and a kind of a red state. What is that? A bunch of counties sue the fucking governor, um, over over limiting people in restaurants and and the lockdown orders and and like a judge claimed it was unconstitutional. We're in the middle of a fucking pandemic, people. You shouldn't be going to restaurants all the time. You don't need like, and even if you are, you don't need to go out, right? Like, let's say you go out on a Saturday night. Great. There's other people that can't go out on Saturday nights because of the work or kids or whatever. But if it's like a, you know, a little restaurant in your neighborhood, and again, this would encourage you to like be more communal, right? Be, be, be able to talk to your neighbors and shit. Be like, oh yeah, are you going to Joe's Crab Shack or whatever? You know, uh, are you, are you going, are you going to Big Mama's Burger Joint? Oh, you know what? You guys are going there on Saturday. Oh, cool. You know what? We'll go there on Sunday. Then you order takeout from other places. Support your businesses that way if you can, but a lot of people can't. So, you know, instead of actually like helping out these businesses, we do these lockdown measures that expect them to still stay afloat. Like it's it's very nonsensical. So part of me is like, I don't want to blame these people because it's they're desperate for something because the American government hasn't provided the people, provided small businesses with any sort of help or anything. So part of me is like, oh, I get, I get why you had to do this, but this is so stupid. Like, why couldn't you, why couldn't you get out there and push for a, for, for like better small business loans, better help for small businesses, a UBI. You could have, you could have done so much more than this, this bullshit that's, that's now going to make this pandemic a lot worse this weird like red neoliberal state that we have here and I, and I really wish they would go for more progressive ideas like ranked choice voting but the last story that I have for you guys uh, also kind of kind of deals with the with what I just ranted about uh, I just uh, I just read that uh, there's not going to be a new stimulus they just said fuck it fuck it we're not gonna no no new stimulus. Fuck it. Uh, the Democrats put something out. The Republicans fought it. The Republicans put something out. The Democrats fought it, and then the and then neither neither fucking side did anything. Not that the Democrats' idea was particularly great. I mean, the Heroes Act that they put out over the summer was uh, basically like a corporate handout. They wanted to expand COBRA, which would basically, which would like gut the health insurance industry. Like it would, it would, it, it would charge the regular American people who don't, who, so a lot of us are struggling. A lot of us don't have, you know, jobs and stuff. They can't go to work. Because we're in a fucking pandemic. Some people are lucky to do that. Some people are lucky to work from home, which is great. But not a lot of us, or or if you even if you are working from home, you've lost the percentage of your income. We're in the middle of an uh, eviction epidemic. We're 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 hitting depression. We're beyond depression rate unemployment. And the Democrats are sitting there and going, "Well, you you can pay for your health care. We're expanding what you can pay for health care." Instead of just saying, you know what? No, we're going to do the universal health care. If you need to go to the doctor, we got you. The government's got you. This is this is the time for the government to act and take care of its people. They're like, no, no, no. We got to figure out how to take care of the corporations because the corporations actually run this country. So that I mean, that was the Heroes Act, right? And they were again going like one one-time payment of twelve hundred dollars. We'll keep everybody good for nine months, right? That's how it works. Everything costs a dollar. It's all a dollar in America. I don't know. I'm a hundred millionaire. They're so insanely fucking out of touch. 
FYI, did a video about that too. <laughs> if you're if you're wondering, I did I did uh, I did a breakdown of of the Heroes Act as well. Which what an insult to 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 name it the Heroes Act, uh, because it's such a slap in the face. Because they call essential workers heroes, but they're not helping essential workers at all. And then you have the Republicans. You have Mitch McConnell going out there and being like, we're going to figure out how to get Americans to work. The Amer- Americans have got to get back to work in the middle of... I know there's a global pandemic, and if, and if people actually go back to work at the same capacity that they did before, the, the virus will spread even more and kill a lot more people. But that's... Well, we got to get y'all back to work because economy... Economy, capitalism... Capitalism, baby! Kentucky. Go back to what? What is your uh, no? Fucking let's make sure that people aren't contracting this fucking disease. And when they are contracting this, this disease, they're like taken care of and shit. Unhealthy obsession with work in this country, and it's perpetuated mostly by the Republicans, but also by the Democrats because they're like, we gotta buy American. Get we gotta get American-made products out there. So we gotta get American to work to make American-made products. So, you know, neither side was happy with, with the other side. And instead of sitting, they, they didn't do their cabal meeting this time around. I don't know. Maybe they, they heard my blood orgy joke that I made a couple months ago. And they were like, ooh, we should probably start stop doing those blood orgies for real. So there was no, there, there was no leadership meetings. They, they, didn't, they didn't talk to each other. Uh, they didn't do anything. And now they're going on vacation. They're like, we're done till November. Bye. And they don't have shit they need to worry about, by the way. These people don't, don't have to struggle. They have Cadillac health insurance. Uh, they, they are living up in their, in their mansions and they're getting uh, their congressional salaries and uh, their fundraising dollars and uh, lobbyist money and all that kind of shit. And they're, I mean, they're fine. They're fine. But the American people who they were supposed to legislate on behalf of uh, are not. And really what they were disagreeing over was uh, state and local funding. That's what they were that's what they were disagreeing over. How much to fund on state and local level. And then now you have uh, Marco Rubio, who is the Senate Small Business Committee chairman, which is hilarious to me because I really want to know what a fucking Marco Rubio thinks is a small business, <laughs> right? Like, what the fuck do you think is a small business, bro? Uh, he was like, I'm really worried. I'm really worried because I don't know what this is going to do to small business America. It's like, oh, now you all of a sudden you give a shit? Also, what do you think is a small business? Shake Shack? You're worried about small business. If you were really worried about small business, you would fight against your fucking Republican uh, fucking colleagues and tell them to get their head out of their ass and fucking give the American people what they need. But you didn't. These people are out of touch and they don't care because they're they're rich bourgeois assholes. Sorry. They're rich bourgeois assholes is what they are. Nancy Pelosi hurt you here's here's what uh, March 2020 this is what her net worth is. This is what they reported her net worth is. 140 million dollars. $140 million. She's a hundred millionaire living in a mansion with two fridges full of ice cream and she can't... Mitch McConnell, $30 million. Not as much as Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi, I, I believe, is she makes the most. Um, she makes the most. She's they, they, The article I read said that she's the one of the wealthiest of the congressional personalities and Let's be honest. That's what they are. They're not real legislators. They don't represent you or me. 
as these fucking putzes do. They're personalities. It's a, it's, it's a fucking reality TV show. You want to know why we have a reality TV show as a president? Because that's exactly what Congress is. That's exactly what the American political landscape is. It's fucking, it's a reality show. It's entertainment. It's not, it's not a government. Let's keep going. Marco Rubio, $2 million. Right? I mean, these are all 100 millionaires and millionaires. Chuck Schumer, he's got a million dollars. Here's what I think we should do. is uh, if, if this is how much these people are making... Uh, AOC, by the way, somebody like AOC, uh, $174,000. Barely anything, right, in terms of, in terms of congressional money. What I think we should do is we should take uh, half, half of what they make and uh, put that into a fund and uh, whatever that amounts to, we divide it up amongst the American people because I bet you, I bet you there'll be enough to cover some money. Maybe the, that'll be enough for one $1,200 check by just taking half of what they make on a yearly basis. Ridiculous. All right, uh, we're gonna end it here. Uh, again, if you want to follow my stuff, I hope you subscribe wherever you're watching. I hope you subscribe to to my channels: uh, YouTube, Facebook, rockfincom slash uh, Blockchain cryptocurrency helps content creators make money off the content they put up. Uh, you can also find a lot more of my stuff over on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. Dot com. Uh, I have a Citizen Revolution show coming up on Friday, this Friday, September 18th, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, I hope some of you guys come check those out. Those are really, really fun. We do it over Zoom. It's a virtual show. I've got a brand, I'm in, I'm in a brand new studio, which is very exciting as well. Uh, so I hope you guys can make it. But till the next time, uh, be safe out there and we'll see you on the road.